text? Don't look at me. Look no, away. I got it. I got it. I got some really good stuff. Got the tips, folks. Okay. Slow down. Exercise tips, man. You got the exercise tips. Take a deep breath. Relax. Don't look. It's all good. Got the tips. You got got the nuts. Put that away. Put it away. It's okay. It's on me. Don't worry about it. I got it. Here. Here you go. No. You're good, right? Your heart is good. I'm good, bro. You're 100. percent I'm good, bro. You're using this thing. I got that. Okay. Take it. The Basruten Cable Machine Routine. Hey, I realized this is rhyming. Cable Machine Routine. Guys, this is it. Once you do this, like a couple of times a week, you almost don't have to do any sit-ups anymore. I mean, your core is going to be so freaking strong, it's going to be crazy. This is great for punching power, kicking power, pretty much for everything. But also a secret ingredient that we have is for breathing. Breathing, yes, I'm gonna to come to that in a little bit. Also good for footwork. You remember I was talking on the 15 rounds on the back, I was talking about footwork and all, all the power from straight punches, whether it's a right across or your, your jab, which is not a jab with us anymore because we're standing square, right? It's more of a straight punch, comes from your back foot. Now this machine is gonna actually help me with it because watch, if I'm having my back foot on the ground, I can push off, but if I lift this back foot, I'm gonna be pulled back by the machine. So this will force me to non-stop make sure with the straight punches that this back foot stays on the floor. So that will help you also in fighting actually because that is what footwork is. I always talk about the Adi shuffle, that's not footwork. Footwork is having your feet on the ground at the moment of impact. Because once you have that, that's the only way to put your body weight into a punch. Whether it's hooks, straight punches, make sure your feet are on the ground. Now. I can go deeper into that. I'm not going to do it. Core strength is everything. Make sure that you rotate your upper body with every move that you make. So I want you, if you use your right hand, your right shoulder is going to pass your left and your left shoulder when you go back is going to pass your right the whole time. Doing it like this, you might as well stop bench pressing. It's single shots. The single shots also stabilize you a lot because it's going to pull you a little bit to the side. So this back muscle here on the top is going to, it's going to be needed because to keep your body straight. It's like walking with one kettlebell, right? It's really good for your core because you constantly have to hold it at the same spot. You will have that here as well. But also the great thing is your one arm makes you rotate and now you're really using your core. Like if you're laying on, on the bench press, right? Nothing really happens. Only you're training your triceps. Uh, if you keep your elbows low and if you keep your elbows up, it's chest and triceps. You see, so it's important, back foot on the floor, rotate everything. And why rotate with everything? Because I can block kicks, I can come back. I can deflect punches, can come back. Deflect punches, can come back. Block kicks on this side, can come back. With this open stance that we have, that I talked about on this 15 rounds, you can do pretty much everything. But let's not get into that because right now we are doing the cable machine routine. The first thing we're going to start with is straight punches. Whatever I do, if I do straight punches, I also use the reverse muscle. It's always good to train both muscles. It's like walking on a treadmill. You know, you also want to make sure if you did like 30 minutes on a treadmill that at least you walk 10 minutes backwards on a treadmill. I only do incline running and walking. I will go over to that uh, as well one time with you guys so I can show you my routine, what I do on the treadmill. But walking backwards is very important for stabilizing the knees because otherwise you're only using one muscle. Uh, what is that? The front muscle. You want to use the back muscles as well. Same here. Pushing, you also have to pull. So let's get to it. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. We forgot one thing, breathing. Why would this be good for breathing? Okay, I explain to you. Once you know these, uh, these exercises, you can start stacking up weight. And that's important, very important. Don't go crazy because I want you to make sure that you can do at least 20 repetitions with every rep. I would try 25 when I was training myself for the fights over in Japan, the 30 minute fights. I would do everything 25 repetition. Now, when I punch with one side, that means that I'm really gonna have to use my core. And once you start flexing your core and you understand breathing, well, if you crush your core together, you can't really expand your chest, right? And breathing is done by expanding your chest. And the biggest movers for expanding your chest are your diaphragm, which is located behind, behind the lowest part of your ribcage all the way around. 
uh, which are your intercostal muscles, your external intercostal muscles, which are the muscles in between your ribs. Those expand your chest, and then there's a vacuum between the body and the lungs, and that vacuum, that will open up your lungs. I always mention this, because otherwise you maybe don't understand. Your chest doesn't expand because you put air in them. It works the other way around. Your chest expands, and that is how you pull the air in. I know, it's a mind breaker. It's a really weird thing to say, but once you understand it, Ooh, a whole new world is going to open up. So if I'm flexing here, <laughs> it's very hard for me to breathe because a correct breath, <sighs> I have to actually use my diaphragm. Those muscles here, belly breathing is what they say. It's, uh, it's belly breathing, but that's just for in the beginning to get inside your head because officially you should really focus on the bottom part of your ribs since that's where your diaphragm is located. So it pushes in and pushes out. And we're going to stop that with this. But on our way back, when we pull, it's going to be relaxed for a moment. That's going to be your moment to take a deep breath or maybe a short breath. It all depends on how much weight you're going to stack onto this. Start slowly, guys. This is important. Start slowly, get familiar with the exercises till this grinded in, and then you can start stacking up weight. Also very important, if you do this before a fight, uh, you know, you want to first of all stop like 12 days before the fight. You want to keep all the muscles around your chest relaxed because if they're not relaxed, you know, you can't expand your chest fully and that's going to hurt you in the stamina department. But also, if you're cutting a lot of weight and then you're putting on a lot of weights with this, you might start pulling something. You don't want to have that. So always be careful. Always warm up. Take lots of fluids. Fluids are going to get out, get out there anyway in a heartbeat, so you don't have to worry about that. All right, so let's get to it. We're going to start with exercise number one. The straight punches. We're going to start with the cross, but I also called my left a straight punch. And again, for the people at home, our stance is an open stance. That means there's no jabs. This is a straight punch because that together with upper body rotation, pushing off on my back foot, that will give you a lot of power. It's very important. Now, a straight punch is done by your triceps. It's not done by your chest. What do I mean with that? That means that we don't want to punch like this. That's bench pressing, has nothing to do with punching. We want to keep those elbows low. It's important, keep those elbows low and then go straight forward. Now, if your hand naturally twists at the very end, you can do it. I want to focus on it. It's just a whole taboo. Everybody's saying you have to do this. It's complete BS. You really don't need it. And the fun part is actually, I believe that the Muhammad Ali said it. He said that you have to twist at the very end. Well, watch him box. He's not doing it. So <laughs> there should be a reason that he said that. I think he just did that to get inside your head. Because if you think about it, you're actually telegraphing, right? If I start twisting here already, my arm moves. You see this movement. And as soon as you see this movement, well, does you see movement, you expect something coming. But if you keep this elbow low, see, it's very hard to detect, detect this punch. Also, this punch and now an overhand is a complete different punch. So just take it from me and I'll watch, watch the other video we shot where I hit the back 15 rounds because I go into detail there about the technique with straight punches. Uh, hooks with everything, but for now, it's the straight punch. Now, whatever I do forward, I also do backwards. So I'm just going to do a few repetitions, okay? I do a few on the right, a few on the left. And then I'm going to flip it. This is important because I want to work the reverse muscle as well, which is going to hit the back here and my back muscles. So the first one, straight punches. I always start with the right. It's very easy. Make sure that the, the bar by the roll actually, when you lower yourself, is a little higher than your shoulder. And the reason I'm saying this is because sometimes they don't have a ball on it or there's a little... Uh, little pieces of metal are here and you're going to scrape your shoulders open. I had it a bunch of times, my students had it a bunch of times. Don't do that. So watch out for that. Lower yourself a little bit. Make sure it's a little bit higher. It's important. Okay. Pushing up on the back foot. That back foot stays on the ground. Elbow stays against the body. And this is it. Whoop. Forward. If it comes naturally to turn at the end, just do that. But rotating, you see, is very important. Just doing this is not good. And by the way, for you people at home, as you can already tell, this is my weak arm. So if this technique sucks a little bit, because it could be because other muscles are, supporting muscles are trying to fix whatever problem I have with this arm, just look at my left arm because the left arm will do it perfect. So after I did those punches, and like I said, minimum 20, I would do 25, you simply reverse. Now, in the same stance, what you can also do, if you want, you can switch stances because then you learn how to throw across from a southpaw position. That's up to you. 
Okay, I just like it like this because then again, I can rotate. Look, my right shoulder goes in front of my left and this one goes here. Constantly rotation, there's constantly stress on the stomach and this is very important, okay? So after 25 repetitions, I'm gonna flip right away and move to this side and now I'm gonna start pulling. Same thing here, rotate your body with every single motion that you make. After you're done with this, very simple, you're gonna do with the left. And once you did 25 repetitions of this one, that's the end of exercise number one. Exercise number two is coming up. Boss, I don't have a cable machine at home. Oh, hallelujah, a rubber band. This is what I would bring with me when I would be uh, traveling. You can do exactly the same thing. You know, you just have to find the rubber band that fits for you. You can do the reverse, you can do everything with a rubber band as well. So invest 10, 15 bucks for a rubber band, maybe two of them, like in different strengths, and just start working, all right? There's always a solution. Exercise number two, body shots. We can't forget the body shots, right? Split shot, liver shot. Split is delivered uh, with your right hand, and liver shot is delivered with your left hand. First of all, we bring the roll down to my knee level. It's about my kneecap, maybe a little lower. That's why I like to have it. And the punch I'm going to do is not a hook. It's kind of a straight punch. I'm kind of stabbing it in. I talk about this technique in the, in the other video that we did for Muscle of Fitness, also for Planet Boss. If you have a little knife sticking out here, out of your knuckle, and if I hit somebody and I slice his whole stomach open, I deliver the wrong punch. What you want to do is you want to stab it in there, and that hole of the knife needs to be exactly in his body as big as the, the knife is. Then you made the perfect punch. Now, why wouldn't I make a hook? Because it's very simple. If somebody gives me a hook to the body and I bring my body back, I'm gonna miss. But if I'm stabbing it in there, he can go back whatever he wants. I'm still gonna clip him. Now, it's also very important that we hit it in a little bit of an angle upwards. So it's a combination of a whole bunch of different punches. It's like a hook, an uppercut, a straight punch. It's, it's all that combined. I want to hit the body in such a way where the, just the rib is, just there in the middle. So this is where my rib is. I want to hit it like that, right here. The liver is a big organ, by the way. It's the biggest organ next to your skin. Skin is the biggest organ, then the liver will be the biggest organ. Stab it in and push it in there. Push it at the very end. But it's all upper body rotation, so I don't want you to stand still and only do this. Constantly rotate, constantly rotate. Really good and really strong for your core as well. Let's start with the right one. I'm gonna put a little bit lighter weight on it. As I used to do this with crazy freaking weights, but just for the explanation, we don't really need it. So, back foot, both feet are on the ground. This is very important. We have this part and I'm gonna step forward. Woof. If you give a body shot, it's almost like you want to hit it here uh, and then come out on the opposite side of the shoulder blade, just below the shoulder blade. So diagonally, you're going to go through the body. That's what you want to do with the liver and you want to do with the spleen shot. See, see, so I'm just stabbing it in there, straight forward. So don't make a hook, no, straight forward. After you did that, same thing with the left. Whether you switch stances, that's up to you. I like to do it in the same stance. And now here is also the liver shot. You see, it's almost a straight punch to the body, but with a lot of rotation. And trust me, that for a body shot will be the most effective. But of course, we need to train the reverse muscle as well. So now you're gonna step away. Now we're attaching, attacking a little bit a different muscle from our back because it's diagonally going down. And the same thing here, rotation, with every move you make is very important. 25 repetition and go to the left. And you do the same thing with the left. And that will be it for exercise number two. Now when I was competing, I would go back to the straight punches right now. And why? Because straight punches, you throw the most in the fight. So I figured I'd double up on those. Okay, so that's up to you. If you're fighting and competing, I will go back to the straight punches right now, take it as the third one. But now we're gonna to go to the third exercise 
if you don't double up on the straight prices, this is going to be confusing, but this is easy. Okay, so first of all, this roll that we have here, we're going to have to bring it all the way down. And now it's also very important that I'm going to stay close to the machine. And the reason I'm staying close to the machine is this. It's uppercuts, and I want to go straight upwards. If I'm standing here, you see, it's diagonally pulling backwards. Here, closer to the machine, it's all the way going perfectly down, and I will put a lot of stress on my uppercuts. Now, the uppercuts, I hated this exercise in the beginning because you're going to feel this hard on your core. But then I started really loving it. It's probably because you will feel this one the most. Now, with an uppercut, normally you pass the hat and that's it. You don't want to go higher. Since I like mixed martial arts and a lot of you guys do mixed martial arts, I did. I hit two bursts with one stone. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm going to go all the way up. And the reason is that I'm going to get very strong underhooks from as well. So if somebody wants to, wants to take me down, I have a really strong underhook. So punch, and I know this is not the perfect punch. Don't look at technique. This is just to train those muscles. Push off on your back foot all the way up. All the way up. Rotation the whole time. So it's going to look like this. And again, make sure you stand close to the machine. Hop, straight up. Hop, straight up. Hop, straight up. Up, straight up, up, straight up. And again, you want to do 25 repetitions and make sure that at the end of 25 repetitions that it goes like this, 23, 24. You see, you want to time it in such a way, not like you're going to go 24, 25, go to the next exercise. That makes it easy, don't do that. You always want to push. Left, same one. Stand close to it, it's important because it needs to go straight down. Same here, you just rotate and bring that arm up as high as you can, so it's not only good for an uppercut, it's also good for an underhook. And then, of course, you wanna stand close to the machine and do the reverse muscle. Now you're gonna pull. And now we're working all the, the top here of your shoulders and your back. And of course, after you did that, 25 repetitions with this side, and bada bing, bada boom, you're going to be done with this exercise. Up to the next one. Okay, so the last exercise is coming. This time, we do simultaneously. This exercise, I'm just doing, because otherwise, you know, you don't train your chest muscles at all. And since I do want to have a little bit of a symmetric thing going on, I figured, you know, let's throw that in. So right now, we're just going to do pretty much flies, but with the machine. What is it? I'll put a, not too much on it here, five and five. Good, so it's a very simple, basic one, right? We all know this one. Go back. So this, just know, this is not for your core. This is just for your chest and for your shoulders a little bit, but pushing forward, that's it. After you did this one, what we wanna do? Train the reverse muscles. Go all the way up, top up here, flip around. I go left below, right high, and I'm going, just gonna pull back. And that's it, so let's do a recap really fast. So, what you wanna do, straight punches, then you start pulling. Then we're gonna start doing the body shots. Body shots also reversed, pull. Go back to the straight punches, since straight punches we, we use a lot in a fight, go back to the straight punches, also use the reversed one, and wrap it up with the uppercuts, and then we're pulling it up. That is all the punching, and that's all for the core, and then just to give you a little bit of a chest, so you're not gonna, look completely like a fighter, so this will get you a little bit of a better posture. I do the flies on the machine, and I trip, pull back as well also for my, uh, my back shoulders, so to say. All that together, I do normally in 32 minutes. It takes me eight minutes to do a complete rep. So that's a lot, right? I mean, think about it. I do one, two, three, four, five exercises, but I also do the reversal. So 10 exercises I'm doing, I do 25 repetitions of each, and I, do, I, I, can, I can do this in 32 minutes. Think about that. Normally, when you do something like that in a gym, and you really focus it, and, and, and you do only 10 repetitions, it's gonna take you an hour, at least, I think, an hour and a half, because you wanna take rest in between. I do everything with supersets, because if I'm training, let's say, my triceps now, 
then my, my triceps can now rest while I'm pulling and train the reverse muscle. And then I go back. And in the beginning, this might be hard, but guess what? Your body is a freaking amazing machine. And soon enough, you don't know any better. And bada bing, bada boom, you can do it and you can fly through it in 32 minutes. I have people here in the morning. I'm, I'm up early. I'm six o'clock in this gym. And you see people coming in. They're already here on a treadmill. And I see sometimes the time, they're like 25 minutes. And after the treadmill, they still, they do this whole workout. I'm already gone. I'm like 35, 40 minutes here and that's it. But I go. You know, it's hard. I really need a cold shower or uh, even I jump in the pool maybe outside because it's a really freak hard working out, uh, hard freaking workout. But that's going to make it fun, right? Getting used to it and be ready because now for me, the only thing that I have could be a street fight. Now it's been since 1908, 1998 that I had a street fight. So street fight's not going to happen, but hey, you never know if it happens. And if your body is ready to throw out a lot of power in a short amount of time, well, that kind of mimics it, right? So that's why I'm doing these kind of exercises and it's just really good for the body. Now, the next thing that you need to know, it's just very important, make sure you put some good food in your body, right? Very simple. The mornings when I wake up, I have EAAs, essential amino acids, and with um, uh, some electrolytes, and that's, I drink like a liter, that's a quarter gallon, that's the first thing I drink when I get up, then I drink one little bit of coffee. I have a special mushroom powder that I have with all the different kinds of mushrooms in there. I'll drink that and then I will be in this gym going hard. When I go back, I drink a protein shake, walk the dog, do some other things. And when I come back, that's when I take my first meal, which most of the time it's about two pounds of sweet potatoes. Very boring, but it makes me feel good. All right, guys, Godspeed. Let me know what you think of this, you know, hit some comments. And let me know what you think of this exercise. This is one of these things that I would only do when you're before a fight, because a lot of people, they get bored out of their mind really fast. I'm not, you know, yes, I, I, I might be bored, but I can still go over it. So I can do something, this I can do four times a week and not be bored of it. I just do it, you know? And, and, and this is a really nice little hint actually for everybody to know. If you don't want to work out physically, right? For your physical workout, if you don't want to do it, but still do it. Now you not only train your physical body, you also train your mind because you're doing something that you don't want to do. And this is something that a lot of people steer away from. Well, I don't feel it like today. Well, that's for you. You have to do it. You just have to do it light. Yeah, but I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. Do it really light, but still do it. Just always train yourself to still do something. We don't have to have everything perfectly in order. Sometimes it's good to do the things that you do not want to do because that's going to make you mentally strong. All right, hope that works. Godspeed, everybody, and fight on. Oh, come on, man. Oh, I need the tips. You got the tips, man? You need the tips. I need more exercise tips.